Hi, you're listening to After Dinner Conversations, short stories for long discussions. What that means is we get short stories, we select those short stories, and then we discuss them specifically about the ethics and the morality of the choices the characters and the situations put us in. Uh, why did you do this? What makes you do this? What makes us good people? What's the nature of truth, goodness, all of that sort of stuff? Uh, and hopefully we're all better, smarter people for it and, uh, and learn a little bit about why we think the way we think. So thank you for listening. Hi, and welcome back once again to After Dinner Conversation, short stories for long discussions. I am your co-host, Colby, here with Jeremy. Hello. And Sarah. Hi there. Hey, Sarah. How are you doing? All smiles again. Indeed. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I know. I'm giving you grief because you told me earlier. <laughs> uh, okay. So like and subscribe, you know, visit us on Patreon. Uh, we've got four anthology books you can get on Amazon now full of between all of them, that'd be like a hundred short stories between those four books in print and ebook. We've also got a magazine that comes out monthly. You can get a year subscription for just four ninety five if you use the discount code HAPPY. And you can get it on our website at afterdinnerconversation.com. I feel like that is a record for the fastest I've gotten all of that out. <laughs> um, all right. And uh, our story, uh, The Freedom Machine. I know you guys usually have me do it, but I'm always happy to pass it off if you want. No, go ahead. No, go All right. Ahead. All right. Freedom Machine it is. Uh, so the Freedom Machine, it's about a lady named Kiki, which is interesting because I've never met a Kiki before except for one, uh, uh, who wakes up in the morning and she finds that her device in her ear, um, actually, it's like a little flashback thing. We're not going to worry about that. The device in her ear uh, has stopped working. The device is called like the Infinity something. Infinity, Infinity System. Infinity Systems. Infinity yeah. Systems which is a really plausible-ish device, like a near-future device. It's basically like a headset that goes in, like a little earpiece. It checks, it, it ties into your bio stuff. Um, it ties into databases. It ties into your social media and even potentially other people's accounts that also have an account with them or other people's social media related to you. It synthesizes all of this, your emails, all of it, um, to try and help you make better decisions. So it tells you like, hey, if you're going to get to work on time, here's probably when you should get out of bed. And it wakes you up and tells you, right? Uh, hey, if you don't want to have a, a caffeine crash midday, like why don't you not have that coffee until 10 a.m.? Um, if you, uh, you know, want to have a good recital, you should probably, you know, uh, you should probably play a little piano today. Uh, I've scheduled it for you. And of course, it all goes into your sort of cloud calendaring system. And you can always accept or decline. You don't ever have to do what it says. It's not forcing you to do anything. But, you know, it knows you pretty well. You've pretty much, if you've bought the software and bought the material, you've kind of bought into the system. And so at the very least, it's sort of like a, a parent always nudging you to, uh, to make better choices. The character, Kiki, the story starts off, hers has broken. And after several years of uh, using it she has become pretty accustomed to it and she pretty much follows what it does all the time um, so she takes it into the shop to get it fixed it's five days it's not going to be back till saturday because it's broken um and so she's really at a loss because she hasn't made decisions on her own in a long time uh, one of her first bad decisions is she gets picked up on by the guy who works in the shop called a mastermind which the way they describe it, it kind of sounds like an apple, like an like an apple store. Um, he takes her out, gets her drunk, has sex with her, says, "Call me again sometime." She's not doing great at work. She's not getting to work on time. Blah blah blah. Um, she goes back into the um, into the shop because she really doesn't know what to do with herself after a couple days, and finds him using the same pickup lines with new women who have also had theirs break. Uh, so she is like, I don't want to come into the store to pick it up. Just mail it to me. And the story ends where it started because it was a flashback in the beginning where she's trying to decide if she's going to put this earpiece from the infinity system back in, or if she's going to go cold Turkey and start, um, making more of her own decisions. Although technically she's always making her decisions. She's just getting good advice from this system about how to be a you know optimally performing person. 
All right, did I miss anything? I try and do these like quickly and succinctly, but yeah, no, that that sounds like oh, a, that was you got everything. Okay, good deal. I, maybe I missed my calling as a as a summarizer. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, what do you think? I think we've this is a version of things we've definitely talked about before. Yeah, it's it's really close to a bunch of other things. So it it's lightly adjacent to trolley problems. Um, sure. Or from the perspective of like, how do uh, self-driving cars work from a decision-making right. standpoint? How can you trust the algorithms? How can you trust you know yeah. what is making these decisions for you? You know, right? Because it, it's you know there's and there's two sides to that. Uh, big data, you know, yeah. Who's massaging the big data to make your decisions? And yeah, you know, who's making high-level decisions for what the society should be doing? And yeah. all these people connected to it. So, it, yeah, it touches on all, all of these interesting questions. So, I'm, I, you know, it's interesting because we've been doing this for so long. And, and a lot of the stories, they're not the same, but they sometimes mm-hmm. rhyme. Right. Yeah. Uh, and this is definitely one that rhymes. Uh, and so I don't want to sort of skip steps in previous discussions we've had. For, so for people that are listening, like go back and listen to some of the other ones. Um, you know, I don't want I want to sh- sort of show my work here. So one of the things you brought up, Jeremy, before, which I always thought was a really good point is this idea of even when you're writing, even if you're listening to an algorithm, somebody wrote that algorithm and somebody was making choices and they're making choices about what is quote unquote optimal, right? right. Um, and so even though, even though you're not making those choices, you're offloading those choices, the choices are getting made. They're just no longer getting made by you. Is that Correct. a pretty good summary of what you've mentioned before? Yeah, definitely. And so that can have its own bias, whether it's the facial ID stuff that like incorrectly recognizes people based on race or makes assumptions based on race, whether that's all the things that algorithm can purposely or inadvertently do. And not just the algorithm, but the data that the algorithm was based on. So, oh, sure. That's a good point. You know, how was the data collected? You know, how biased was the data when it went in? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's a lot of what's going on around, uh, you know, discussions of big data right now, an algorithm used by uh, police departments, yeah. uh, for example, that was based on racist policing is now informing police to be more racist, for example. Right, because, it's, because you know? the, the data that they're using to fill their database are the police reports that were gathered from racist police officers 20, 30 years ago. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Directing them to police more in, you know, areas of color and things right, like that. Right, because so, they previously policed in areas of color and based on all right. the stop and frisks had found. Exactly. Whatever. So, you know, if, if nobody's cleaning the data so that it's a good data set going into the system, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. Sure. So, it, you know, it, it talks, you know, it, it loosely, it really doesn't, it really doesn't call any of that out. We're just seeing... We're seeing it from this outside perspective. Yeah. And, you know, because of our contact with other stories that have talked about this and what's going on, it, it just brings up these questions. Yeah, it brings it how up yet again. Know, right. How mm-hmm. do you know what's the data set that forms these decisions? And, and how do you know who's managing it and directing it from, you know, if there's no transparency for the what the company is doing? So do you think there's a way to do this either by not making it too intelligent, by making it s- like making it simpler because I assume you don't have these big data questions with like Google calling and setting a restaurant reservation for me. You know, we no, can sort of tell really, Google, right. like make an appointment and it's like, where would you like to go? And I'm like Italian. Right. And then Assistant, it just calls the, you know, it calls the Italian restaurant and like figures right. it out for you. Yeah. In that sense, you know, and as a data assistant, somebody scheduling your time, you know, you know, it gets questionable when you talk about to be the most productive. Like, again, what are you defining that as? Yeah. Um, but a digital assistant like this, absolutely. I think we've all talked about, I know you and I have both talked about, we want digital assistants that will do a lot of these, what we see as menial tasks. Um, yeah. Whether they're bi- whether they're biological or right. physical, or we've had those discussions as well. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right. So I, I kind of knew this is where you were going to go with this. When I read it, I was like, all right. Yeah. So I know I know Jeremy's interest is in the sort of misuse of big data. So so I was trying to think of ways to to um, to throw your curveball here. Sure. And so here's my curveball for not just Jeremy, but for you too, Sarah. We all 
as people that have sort of now evolved with internets, right? We all have gotten in the habit of cognitive offloading, right? We don't remember phone numbers anymore because they're in our phones. So we've sort of just like, we've, we just don't need that anymore. So we spend our thought process doing better things. Uh, you know, we, uh, don't necessarily think about, I don't know, all the different things you, that just automatically get fed into your phone now or saved on your phone or because, you know, we are at, at some level working as like basic level cyborgs, right? Our phones are our cyborg tools that tell us whether we should bring an umbrella, uh, you know. So here's my question for you. I assume you're okay with this sort of cognitive offloading of like basic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I mean, Sarah. In that, in that sense of uh, before I go to step two, you're also okay with this sort of cognitive offloading of phone numbers, recipes, um, external memory. Yeah, even, yeah. Even turn by turn directions to turn houses. by turn directions. You know how many cups are in a whatever a pint. Uh, yeah, sure. I guess for okay. the sake of conversation. Let's okay, say. for the sake All of right, conversation. Yeah. So here's my second part of this. How do you? How is it okay to do this cognitive offloading when what she's arguably doing is the same thing at a higher scale that she can always override, that she can always uh, choose not to, and that we're assuming that, that, like, it's not telling her she has to do it. It's just saying, like, look, if you want to reach the goals you've told me you want to reach, mm -hmm. here's what you should do. You don't have to do it. But you told me earlier you didn't want to be a smoker. So here's what I'm, here's, and so it's this sort of like Jiminy Cricket in your ear. Mm -hmm. uh, what's wrong with that? No, I don't think anything's wrong with, with that from a, at a personal level. Okay. You know, and it, they really, in the story, they don't get into how much it's customizable and you know, how much feedback you're putting into yeah. it. All they say so, is like, it makes you the best version you can be, the most productive, right. best version of yourself. Yeah. And it does mention that she has the opportunity to rearrange her schedule, but she just always chooses to go with the suggested schedule. You right. Know, she's got to choose your own adventure kind of thing going on here. And it would be interesting if you declined a particular activity, would the infinity system recalculate? That like, you don't want to do that. A new set of choices. Right. And so here's my question to you, Sarah. We, it's easy to be hard on the character in this story for sort of becoming um, a zombie, a living zombie that like that she's given up her free will, so to speak. And she seems very happy. Exactly. But number one, yeah. she's happy. And number two, she's living the life she has told us she wants to live. And so yeah. I don't I don't necessarily. It's easy to criticize her for being a freeloader on some for 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 you know, right but, thought process. But she's getting the life she wants. It's an interesting way to approach the the definition of the word freedom, right? Which they address from the very start of the story. Yeah. And it, it also because she talks about anxiety and you know a, right that she struggled with anxiety. That's right. And so is this the right solution for somebody who's anxious, or should they be getting met, you know mental health care? to work with the anxiety instead of just and what's the goal of that mental problem. health care right and what yeah and what's the goal of that mental health care is it for you to not have anxiety or is it for you to be better at managing the things that cause you anxiety because Which, it's, i guess that kind of solves this too she's managing the things that cause her anxiety through the help through the use of this tool yeah. so but is that really you know when it goes away you know that causes I mean, additional problems how's, how's, how's it i mean do you see this as different than like any of the ssr ssr drugs any of the zoloff you know vicodin i don't know i don't even know oh, what the drugs I don't are think that's comparable okay so tell me why it's not like in both cases you're using a engineered tool to allow you to not be stressed in situations that traditionally stress you so the medication doesn't doesn't make decisions, doesn't offer you choices, doesn't it all it does is um, balances chemistry in your brain. Mm -hmm. That and that reduces your 
anxiety. Your sensations of anxious sure. feelings or depressed feelings, sad feelings, stuff like that. The offloading decision making like this is, um, I think it's completely different because the medicine doesn't function that way. Maybe I just don't understand what, what angle you're coming at that comparison from. I guess the, the angle I'm coming at, and maybe it's an unfair angle, but the angle I'm coming at is um, technology creates tools to help you function in a way that doesn't cause anxiety, that makes you less likely to get anxiety. And is there a difference in which technology gets utilized to serve that purpose and how that technology interacts with you? Hmm, like, good question. Like, hmm. like, like, does it matter? I'll give you an example. Like, does it matter uh, if I don't care that the building's on fire or if, or if, the, or if that, that's, that's the technology? Or if the technology is, you know, there's a sprinkler system and so the building never catches on fire. Like, does it matter? In both cases, I, you know, I sleep well at night. Maybe a building on fire is not a great <laughs> example because one example you burn up. But, but you understand, like, it's all just tools to make you function. And I'm trying, I, I, I struggled when I read it because I had, I think, the same reaction I know you guys probably had where I'm like, what a cop out. Like, you've just quit living life. You've, like, you voluntarily outsourced life to a machine that has maybe biases and things and making choices like you what's the point of living if you're not living um ex- the, the relationship questions are are the most interesting how these machines work to um determine when a de- relationship is good for her and yeah and what what relationships are good for her now that i think was probably the extreme end of this and the decision making that it was doing for her. That's right. It was telling her. It would set up dates for her, and it would tell yeah. her how and then to tell answer her, someone if they asked her out. Right. Yep. Yeah. Which she could then, ignore. Right. right. And then tell her after a while, this relationship's no longer good for you. You should go back to work. Isn't or, that what friends and, and parents do? Ooh, like I don't. Ooh, we don't yeah, listen to our friends and parents. We don't listen to them. <laughs> But you don't have to listen to this machine either. That's my point. And this is why, like, I, there's some... There's so some, is this more criticism of this character just wholeheartedly like, releasing I, her this, decision-making? So this is the frustration I had. Because the things that we talked about, that, the lead-in parts, were all stuff that I'd already worked out in my head that yeah. we were going to talk about. The part that I couldn't work out is why do I hate this lady so much when I can Oof. think of all of the ways that, I, that similar things are being done anyway? Whether it's drugs, whether it's a parent, whether it's a friend, whether it's taking someone you're dating to go meet your friend so they can tell you like, hey, you're not seeing this person correctly. Like they're all situations where you're, where seek- where you're seeking some third source, whether it's a person or a, a, a chemical, to help you make better decisions that you could or could not um, listen to. I don't know why those are okay with me, but what she's doing gives me this like, instinctual like vomit in my mouth and i can't i couldn't wrap my head around why one was different than the other Mm, and i think it's because you don't know the the what am i thinking of the uh uh, the goals of whoever's running the software you know and and how they intend to manage your life and that you do have a better sense of it with your friends and family Yes. Because you assume they're working in your best interest. Right. And you don't know that. You don't actually know that. I think that's a subtext here is we don't actually know that the software is working in Mm. your best interest. It may appear that way. You know, uh, like going to a manager for advice, work advice, as opposed to going to a friend for work advice. (laughs) Like asking your manager if you should ask for a raise sort of thing. Uh, Right. Uh, Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the question of it's not... Or it, it it's a source of dubious uh, ethics or dubious motivations. Right. Motivations. Right. Hmm. You don't know what the motivations are behind the people running the software. Mm-hmm. So um, there's hmm. a play that this immediately reminded me of called The Compass. And um, I saw it, I want to say 2018, with my students. ASU, oh, cool. Arizona State University put it on. And um, so they did special performances for young people. And the premise of this play is there's an app on your phone that makes decisions for you. (laughs) You can choose not to take its advice. But um, this main character generally does take the advice of this app called The Compass. Mm -hmm. 
And it's the same kind of idea. It has, you know, access to all this data, social media, and, all, and like basically her life. Yeah. Um, and it encourages her to make a decision that turns out to be harmful. Mm. And so now she has been arrested. She's on trial. And her defense is wanting to blame the company that made the app. Because the app told her to make this decision. Mm. Um, and so the really cool thing about this play and the way that it's written, um, hold on, is it um, throws the the ending out to the audience. As the jury. As the oh, jury. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the compass. It looks like Steppenwolf was the first group to do it. Steppenwolf Theater Company in Chicago. Okay. Well, that's cool. And, um, yeah. So... <laughs> a little closer to the microphones here i'm sorry so sorry. um the audience has to be the jury and there's there's different endings and I are don't they really are remember. they are they allowed to ask questions yes you're allowed to ask questions and so they what they did was they put our audience into little groups and oh, a that's cast super member clever. would be planted there and would act as kind of the jury foreman and kind of direct the discussion and answer questions and ask questions. So the so students the could ask stage questions. Kind yeah, of yeah. had to improvise uh, conversations. Like oh, that's in the super jury clever. Room. And so they showed the the vote, and I can't remember if we were guilty or not guilty. Hmm. I can't remember how it turned out, um, but it was very very interesting to consider because it made the students consider. Who is responsible for the actions of this young person? And of course, their immediate response, because they're identifying with the young person who's on trial, is to say, well, she's not responsible because the app told her to do it. Sure. And then, you know, they ask more questions. They get deeper into, like, this idea of who is really behind this and all of that. And they're like, well, no, she made the choice to follow the apps, you know. So they, you kind of get to watch them go back and forth. Right. It's very similar to the story. It hmm. immediately reminded me of that. And I don't think that's going to be an un... I mean, I think this... I can tell you, I was in a... Like those driver's ed classes for when you're speeding and you get points off your ticket. I think I've only ever gotten yeah. one or two tickets in my life. But the one I was in, uh, there was somebody who was in the in the thing because she took the exit that Google Maps told her to take, but it was on the 10 or whatever in Phoenix. And the immediate best left off the freeway is the HOV lane. Hi, this is Colby, and you are listening to After Dinner Conversation, short stories for long discussions. But you already knew that, didn't you? If you'd like to support what we do at After Dinner Conversation, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash after dinner conversation. That's right. For as little as $5 a month, you can support thoughtful conversations like the one you're listening to. And as an ad incentive for being a Patreon supporter, you'll get early access to new short stories and ad-free podcasts, meaning you'll never have to listen to this blurb again. At higher levels of support, you'll be able to vote on which short stories become podcast discussions, and you'll even be able to submit questions for us to discuss during these podcasts. Thank you for listening, and thank you for being the kind of person that supports thoughtful discussion. And the immediate best left off the freeway is the HOV lane, as opposed to if you don't aren't in the HOV lane, you have to take the right off the freeway and then go up and do a U-turn and double back over the freeway. And so she got a ticket for being in the HOV lane on the exit. And the police officer's like, look, I don't care what Google Maps tells you. You're one You're person in a car. car. Right. Yeah. And she's like, right. well, but I don't know what to do because it told me that was the exit I had to take. What am I supposed to do? Not take the exit? I don't know where I'm going. I'm like not... Anyway, so that was her excuse. It didn't get her off, by the way. So apparently that's not a good reason to Well, do yeah. It. And I mean, so similar to like if Kiki had tested her infinity system by not doing some of the things, yeah. Google Maps will recalculate your route. Yeah. And maybe that's the way it would work with this, right? Like if you... Like I make that decision all the time. I don't want to take, you know, I, I try to avoid the 60 as often as possible. So if it's trying to right. take me to the 60, I go a different route and it recalculates to avoid mm. that, you know? I'm curious. Do you agree with... Jeremy's assessment that the first off, did you have the same sort of uh, yuck feeling when you saw the way she was relying upon this that I did? Yeah, I did, but I was also a little jealous. Like, how nice not to have to decide what time to drink coffee. No, not, not, <laughs> you know, 
That's exactly. a good point. <laughs> and like to have all of this data, you know, um, telling her what she should be eating and, you know, what, you know, you should practice your piano. Like, that's a great idea. You have time to do that right now. Here's options to do this healthy activity as opposed to this unhealthy one. Right. Put and, down the Instagram cat scrolling and go right? practice the piano. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, there's a little bit of jealousy there. I probably wouldn't, would not follow my infinity systems advice just as for well lots as of things does, but. Right. Well, but, okay, so you bring up an interesting point though this is one of my jealous things about when people get all excited about chris hemsworth or any of the guys that get ripped for movies is i'm like yeah if somebody followed me around all day and said only eat what i hand you right uh and they made every meal for me every day yeah i could have any body yeah. i could see in a magazine and right. scheduled your exercise time. And right. Well, it's part because of their job to look like that. It's part of their job, and I agree, but it's also they no longer are the decision makers. I mean, once you, you they, they have essentially given up the ability to make bad decisions related to food or exercise. Yeah. Because for sure. they've got somebody who's like being like, hey, it's one o'clock. Here's your tray of, you know, boneless, skinless chicken breast and broccoli. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly, and, and I don't get the same gut feeling about that, right? That I, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, like, yeah, you're trying to achieve a goal. Like, you hired someone to help you with that goal. And I don't know what the problem is. And also, in that scenario, you don't really question their motivations outside of what you've hired them to do. Right, but I'm sure that they want to keep making a living, right? Like, so I'm sure right. they have motivations that aren't necessarily aligned with mine because they want to. Like but you don't question their motivations that they're stealing your data or and reselling it. That's or true. That, they're, um, that their motivations are, in a societal sense, counter to freedom or, you know, to whatever you're worrying about. Sure. You know, in a society. So that they're trying to harm society in some way that's beneficial to them. Yeah. That's well, true. And then you, you can also take this um, technology and monetize people's decisions. Absolutely. You know, you know what would make yeah. you really happy today? A Starbucks. You should go buy Starbucks and get a, a big Frappuccino. You know, I think that's it. Now or that this, you mention this it. This store is having a sale today. You should stop in and, you know, I think buy you, a you new know, dress. I think that's the part of it that, part of it, not all of it, part of what makes me sort of throw up in my mouth with this is, is the idea of I could see like a company being like, hey, if you'll insert this instruction, like, look, uh, you know, Chipotle and a burrito factory are nearly identical. If you know that your person likes Chipotle and, you, you know, they get to eat it three times a week, why don't you suggest burrito factory one out of three of those times uh, and we'll pay you, you know, who exactly. knows how much money to make to make. You know, compar roughly comparable, but pro business suggestions. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I don't think. I don't know. We have a situation going on in our schools here in Arizona with um, a TikTok trend where students are destroying school property and sharing this on TikTok, and it's causing this to be a that real make it, problem. Doesn't that make in it really schools. easy to catch them? They don't. I. You're. You know, okay, you would think that. You would think that, but they, you know, these these guys, they have it kind of down, you know. Okay. Um. So it's just videos of them stealing soap dispensers. Um, I know dryers. at our school, yeah. thirty-five soap soap dispensers were stolen this week. This week, okay. Thirty-five, and the handles off of the sinks. The um, puns, by the way, are just I boiling know. all over me, and I'm just but really like resisting. The restroom is the easiest place because there's no staff in there monitoring yeah. restrooms. There's no cameras in there, so of right. course they're going into the restroom and they're vandalizing the schools. Yeah, um, we have to lock the bathrooms now. Yeah, um, and it's because of this TikTok trend. Because of potentially just one or two students, right? And so yeah. it's so I saw somebody on. Um, facebook this week we were discussing this as parents and teachers and somebody said tiktok should be liable for this they should have to pay restitution to the schools that are having to pay for all of this you know vandalized property and all these repairs and so i, I was like it's, that's an interesting it's an interesting point of view but it, it's not tiktok telling students to do this 
it's right. other students you know which using their platform right yeah but here's the thing though right tiktok has the ability to filter what people see like right and they yeah. should be removing so content like this. this I don't know, man. That's a slippery company. slope. Yeah, absolutely. Who's responsible for the decisions that people make, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this, I mean, made me, this made me think of that, too. I was like, oh, right. wow. You know, kids. So, so could the Infinity Systems be responsible for her if she did something that she shouldn't have done or wouldn't otherwise do, but it informed her was the most optimal decision? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know why. I just really hated this lady. Like, I hated her weakness, <laughs> I think, is what it was. Because, like, a person who I think is a well-balanced, well-adjusted individual who's maybe not susceptible, might this might be a useful resource. Right. But for somebody who struggles with anxiety, it becomes a crutch that becomes an increasingly more a source of increasingly greater dependency. Right. right? And so and, the, per but, the very person you shouldn't give it to, in my mind, is the person who's most likely going to want to use it. Right? Who's like, I, decisions are complicated. I just, I, just, I just can't. I can't. It's like, well, okay, then you automatically can't get it because you're just going to use it all the time and you're going to use it irresponsibly and you're going to quit functioning as a human being. It's no longer scheduled. You'll, but she functioned as a human being because of it, where the anxiety yeah. keeps her from functioning as a human being. So there's a line in in this story that I was like, ooh, I, I like this line. Okay. It says, uh, the only decision she could make after that was a conscious decision for unconsciousness. She went to sleep. Right. And I was like, and I feel like she has consciously chosen to go unconscious. That the, the whole infinity system for her was going to sleep. Like, like to everyone else, to everyone else, she's like, she's doing great at her job. She's doing piano recitals. She's whatever. And it's like, yeah, just because you're the best cow doesn't mean you're not a cow. Like you're not, mm, yeah. you're not a human being anymore. You don't think she was enjoying her life though? Cows enjoy their lives. It doesn't make them people. I mean, assuming she they don't get slaughtered. She was suffering quite a bit without the infinity system. I agree. Right. So this she is... was struggling and suffering quite a bit. So you're saying that she deserves to suffer and deserves to struggle because she's incapable of making decisions? Absolutely not. Uh, but that's a great question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an outstanding question. No, I think that's... I think it's one of those things. I think it's a little bit like drinking uh, or other addictions or other crutches where it's like, uh, do you feel like you really need this drink? Th then you can't have it. Right? The only time you can have a drink is when you're like, nah, I could take it or leave it. Right? Do you think you really uh, need, do you think you really need someone to help you do all of your decision making? You're like, I really need it. And you're like, no, then you can't have it. Because you, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to use it in the way it was intended. Right? As a tool as opposed to a crutch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I see, see what you're saying about the, the parallel between this and, um, medications in that sense yeah. yeah 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 because i really need my antidepressants sure and i think a lot of people do and i think i probably do and i should be taking them and i'm not but uh yeah uh but i just it's somehow it's the difference between um google scheduling your haircut appointment and somehow you letting google know schedule haircut appointments whenever i need them like every you know like, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I don't know. I'm not being really articulate because it's like a very fluid idea in my head because it's so close. But I feel like the thing that she needs is to help to be better at dealing with this, the anxiety of decision making. So would an app, the same app that works towards that goal, but still you don't know everything else about it, be okay in that situation how would that look though that's the part i'm struggling yeah i know you'd have to figure out how would this app help you with decision making instead of make decisions for you like i feel like it would be i feel like it would be a meditation app not a decision making app is one of the lessons of this is that left to our own devices people will always mess up their own lives 
could be. That could be. <laughs> I mean, I got that from this too. Like, yeah, I mean. Oh yeah, this infinity system sure helps her make good decisions and keeps her from making poor ones. And left to her own devices, she immediately started making poor decisions. <laughs> but I think she was making poor decisions than she was making years earlier because she was out of practice. I think that's part don't... of the thing, right? I mean, in my mind, I have no evidence for that in the writing. You're absolutely right. But in my mind, like, the more you depend on it, the more you get out of practice. Right. So a better app would be working with her to that, so that she makes the decisions. Yeah. Better. Like like of... it, like it gave her like a pro con list maybe and was like yeah. which would you prefer? Or something because I feel like I feel like a good parent doesn't tell you what to do. They help Guides you... you in the direction of making Yeah, those good you're right. Decisions. They help you make decisions understanding that even after they've guided you, you might be like I'm getting a tattoo and you're like I support that decision. We've talked about it for an hour. Like we've talked about the pros and cons. You've told me why you thought it was a good idea. Uh, all right, let's go. We're doing it. I've, I've told you why it shouldn't be on your face. Right. And <laughs> right. Mike Tyson's the only one who can pull that off. Yikes. And I think that's, and, and I couldn't articulate that when we started our discussion, but I think that's my problem with it is it's not helping her make better decisions. It's making better decisions. And I, yeah. And I think that's very valid, a very valid distinction. I don't know. It uh, just really made me want to throw up in my mouth. I really wanted to punch her in the face. And I want to, of course, because, want to. Yeah. Because I feel like I would use an app like this. Would you, so where, how would you use it? Like, I'm curious. What would be your... The, for what planning. instances? <laughs> right. Meal oh. planning and day planning. Okay. And it, again, like, I would like to study Italian. But I'm real shit at looking at Duolingo. You know? <laughs> Even with a little schedule. pop-up that comes up that's like, hey, yeah. you've done Duolingo in three Isn't days. That the one that it stops giving you the pop-up after long enough. Isn't it does it. comes to your door and... <laughs> threatens to murder you or your family duolingo yeah duolingo man you, <laughs> you you have a different app than i do you uh you probably have we're the, hearing a lot of jokes about you probably this, have the like, you probably have the pay, i think you have the, the paid the version owl? yeah yeah it's the little owl yeah. like threatens you threatens yeah, I, your friends and family I, if you don't i think that's study. i think that's, that's a different I, way I to make it, decisions for people i think that's if you have the paid version they they up their level of yeah uh yeah <laughs> uh, that would be a really good Saturday Night Live sketch where Duolingo is like, <laughs> I think it's like, been done. See, I like, see this dog. This. I'm gonna punch this dog if you don't, if you don't, <laughs> yeah. do, if you don't do 20 minutes of Spanish today. I think I've seen yeah. this though. Like, <laughs> that would be really good. Showing up in people's kitchens and they're like, <gasps> ah. But I mean, but you bring up a great point. Like a lot of apps give you like these friendly reminders yeah. that pop up in your app. Like, hey, get up and move around a little bit. You know, Garmin or whatever. Like, hey, you haven't done Duolingo in two days. We miss you. Like, My it's, it's... watch reminds me to breathe. <laughs> well, you better hope you never let your battery run down. It's like every once in a while, it's like, take some time to breathe. And I'm like, that is a great idea, I'm watch. Like, I can literally do that without thinking. Right. <laughs> See, as opposed to my watch would be like, hey, let's try not murdering that person in front of you in line today. That would be awesome. I'm not, tell I'm not telling you to make that decision. I'm just giving you the pros and the cons so you can come to the conclusion on your own that, what you think would oh, be no, Murder is not good. <laughs> so for you, Colby, I think the app should tell you which line to get in. Dude, we oh, just had Colby, I have the same problem. You aren't in the longest line or the slowest line. Oh, no, I have it's, my, it's my kryptonite. Yeah. No, you I've have used, the same special gift. I've used all sorts of strategies. This is totally off topic, but I've used all sorts of strategies over the years. Like I've done the thing where I'm like, okay, that lady at the front working, she looks super competent. Like she's like really good at her job. Like this line, but it didn't work. And I've got another because one. Like, somebody gets in and they have like 500 expired coupons. Yes, <laughs> exactly right. And then, and then I've also <laughs> done the thing where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in the longer line or the equally long line with like five sets of single men. And like one of them will just decide they're going to chat up the lady at the counter. And I'm like, mother, seriously, dude, like I, I've given up. My only answer now is I just like, I'm going to bring like a, like a, like a 20 sided die and just be like, what line <laughs> am I going in? It doesn't work. I hate it. Yeah. Yep. We it's, all have decisions we're sick of making. It's, it's the strongest yeah. indicator I have that there is a heaven and hell is that I can't pick <laughs> the right lines because 
there's no way it could happen by random chances. Like it would be like taking a multiple choice exam with only four questions on each question and getting like a 3%. Like <laughs> it just, it can't happen as much as it does. All right. I need to shut up about this. It just really bugs me. <laughs> um, oh, one other question. So uh, if you had the chance to use the infinity system, like as it is in the story, would you do it? Yes. Really? Why is that? It seems really interesting to me. Okay. Like when I think about the little things that I really don't like doing, like picking my clothes and deciding what to eat, and I really don't like making those kinds of decisions. So would you be that was like, you know, what would be the best thing for you to eat today based on this, that, or the other? Um, uh, Peanut butter toast with a banana, you know, like, and then I would just be like, that sounds great. (laughs) Right, and I've already ordered some. It's in the fridge. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, would you be okay if it, like, uh, scheduled, laundry. like, today, you know, tonight we're doing laundry, like, and it just showed up in your calendar that, like, you know, you knew yes. you were going to be home, yeah. and Tuesday at 8 p.m. was laundry night. You know, and I spend a lot of time calendaring and planning, because I really do have a very busy schedule. It's like yeah. we went back to school, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm working 12, 12, 14-hour days. Sure. Right? Life of a well, teacher. I mean, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but... Um, and everything has to be very carefully scheduled. So I actually spend a lot of time doing what this machine does yeah. for her. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Jeremy, you're a yes too? Yeah, generally. I mean, I, I still question, you know, how much are they selling me? You know, what, sure. again, the suggestions, we're, we're booking you, you should go here. Right. Oh, you, you wanted know. to get a hotel in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, right. the oh. Hilton's having a discount. It's 20% off. I keep forgetting things that, like, I was here, I was like, I just said we needed to buy something. Like, we needed to yeah. replace, replenish something in the house. And then totally It's forgot. gone. Yeah. I, That's why you, still, yeah. I do like that. that. That's actually, I use the Alexa for that. I'll just say, the, like, the personal Alexa, assistant remind me to buy, sense. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 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 In the personal assistant sense, this okay. whole machine sounds really cool. Sounds really good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I don't know. I mean... But I, I, I would struggle have questions with about personal data and... Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I mean, if there's anything Facebook has taught us is that, like, like whatever you think they're doing, they're doing, and in five more years, they're going to come clean on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if they have just, to. If, right. Right. It, it, right <laughs> if they absolutely have to, because they, the government won't can't get in on it or something. Uh, oh, one other question, and this is the last one we'll end on. Uh one of the things I thought about with this is, is the process, is making the right decisions more important than the process and the experience of making decisions? Oh, in that sense, right. If you're not making decisions, like if you're not failing at things and I think we even if you are failing about- sometimes, right? Like I, you know, I, 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 the fact that I didn't buy the best car for what I need and what I can afford, is it, is there some thing when you weigh out that decision making process can you add a little bit to the side of the scale that says but i got practice buying stuff and making decisions absolutely i i think there's definite value in in those processes too Hmm. and so if but you'd probably have to balance this but if you're not having to make those decisions are you then getting you know next level experience Above that, because I wondered that too. Are you making are you making better decisions? Right. Yeah. Are are you are you spending more of your time making better decisions for the ones that really matter? Yeah. As opposed to getting bogged down in a bunch of little decisions that don't matter much. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, an outstanding story by, and I t- forgot to mention this at the beginning of it by. Uh, I got to scroll Remy back Martin. up. Yeah, Remy Martin. Th- Martin. Thank you. Thank you, Remy. There's an awesome story. Uh, like and subscribe. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We got all the stuff. We're not collecting your data. Uh, magazine, four ninety five a month. Use the discount code HAPPY at afterdinnerconversation.com. Thank you very much, and thank you guys for joining me. Yep, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. If you've enjoyed listening to this, please like and subscribe. Uh, It helps us out a ton. You know, the vast majority of people listen haven't liked and subscribed, which means maybe it shows up in your algorithm, maybe it doesn't. So don't leave that to chance. Just go ahead and hit that button, and we'd sure appreciate that. And uh, that way we can keep doing what we're doing, and you're not left to the whims of some algorithm.
Thanks. 